Hey, welcome back to Little Hollow Homestead. Today I'm gonna to show you how I mix up my seed starting mix. Um, I'm getting ready to start my tomatoes for the year and I'll show you the process. Um, in this tray, I've just got regular old potting mix. Um, I got this a while ago before seed starting mix was available. So I'm gonna mix some of this. This is just some uh, potting soil that was left over in some uh, poinsettias. Since I'm choosing to sow my seeds in these bigger pots, uh, I'm, I don't want to go through a ton of seed starting mix all at once. So on the bottom of these, I'm going to put a mixture of the potting soil and this uh, soil that came out of some poinsettias that we had in the house over Christmas time. That will go on the bottom. Then in the top, I'll put the seed starting mix, wet it down real good, plant my seeds, and then top it with some perlite. So they say that if you, if you top your pots with perlite, it will uh, decrease the chance that your um, starts will get all leggy and stuff. So I've never tried this before, so I'm gonna try the perlite on top. And then in my actual seed starting shelves, I'll keep the lights down low. And, and then as the seedlings grow, I'll raise the lights up um, to prevent any legginess. And then um, once my seeds get going a little bit, I'll put a fan on them on a timer and that'll help harden them off without exposing them to the outside and the uh, possibility of, of being too cold and possibly freezing. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get going here. I'm just gonna kinda get me a mix. Mix that up real good. And then we'll uh, get the seed starting mix. seed starting mix will go in the top like that. Oh, I also uh, forgot, I'm going to put um, just a, little, a small handful of worm castings in just to provide a little extra oomph. Um, yeah, I think this will work out well. I usually don't uh, add the worm castings until I transplant, but I'm gonna do it now. Hopefully that will improve the quality and the germination rate of the seeds I'm starting today. So I'll uh, get going here and show you when I get them all planted, what it looks like. One thing I failed to mention, if you pre-wet your seed starting mix, and even your potting soil, it saves a lot of time you just kind of mix this up till it gets nice and clumpy. Then you know it's, it's holding enough water. So when you plant your seed, it's gonna be surrounded with soil that's, that's uh, moist and ready to uh, promote germination. Um, this stuff really holds water well once it, uh, once it becomes moist and saturated. Anyway, just mix dry into your over wet soil until you get that nice consistency you're looking for. I like that. And then we'll put that in the top of the pots here in just a second. Okay, now I've got enough of the, the potting soil and enough of the seed starting mixture um, soaked, ready to go into the pots. I've already got my uh, combination of this um, Soil from the poinsettias, poinsettias and the um, regular potting mix in the pots. Now I'll just take and put a little glob of the seed starting mix down. Don't want to fill it all the way up to the brim because I still need to cover this with perlite. And you don't want it to uh, spill out on you. Just 
little plenty cold where I live, and this uh, water and soil combination is plenty chilly. Now we've got them all uh, ready to accept seed. I'll clean it up a little bit so it looks good. And we'll I'll probably I'll probably just go with three seeds per pot. Gives us a 33 and a half percent chance of them all germinating, which isn't a bad problem to have, especially sowing in these bigger pots. You uh, give up a lot of space in your seed starting rack by going with these bigger pots initially, but. Thought I would give it a try this year and see how it works. Okay, so we'll get our seeds after I get my hands clean. Okay, now I've got all my Roma tomato pots uh, covered in perlite. Uh, this will either succeed beyond my wildest, wildest expectations or fail miserably, we'll see. But we'll put them on my little heat mat right here. going. Uh, so in a previous video I've got my cabbage and my broccoli sown in this tray and then my onions I've got them out soaking up the sun right now and uh, we'll put them back in here as soon as it gets a little colder outside and I'll keep going I'll, uh, I'll keep planting get all of my tomato plants sown today and get them on these heat mats and uh, start the countdown. We'll show you the finished product here in a minute. Okay, quick little update on everything that we got planted today. I'll show you my seed starting rack and uh, how it's all set up. Okay, we've got the onions back in from being out in the sun. And we've got our uh, grow light on them. Um, we've got this flat planted. I decided to plant more cabbage and broccoli. And uh, we'll find a place for that if it uh, germinates and succeeds. Then we've got my two flats of Roma tomatoes, all ready to go on the heat mats. This is the original sowing of broccoli and cauliflower from a week or so ago. And I've got my beefsteak tomatoes down there. Um, I've just got the one grow light right now. As soon as these sprout, I'll install the rest of my grow lights on chains. And a little bit later, we will start some other stuff I'll show you. So in about a month, I will sow my spaghetti squash a little early, uh, cucumbers, I've got market more cucumbers here somewhere. Anyway, my winter winter squash, these take 105 days, so I'll get a head start on those as well. Um, there's those hostile pasta hybrid spaghetti squash I'm excited to try this year. Uh, my okra, I'll start my okra a little early as well. Um, but we're about a month off from doing that. And then we'll have everything started that needs to be started. Then everything else that goes in the garden will just be direct sown. So that's the plan. We're off and running. <laughs> 